You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 23 verse 5 to 4. Good evening everybody. Good evening everybody. Wie van ons het klaar geëet vanavond? Ons gaan vanavond You saw on the invitation Tonight is not just any night Tonight Is a night where you get invited to the Lord's table Tonight we talk about Bringing it all to the table as the song suggested So Psalms 23 while I was reading it, and as I read it over and over again, I realized that God prepares a table in front of my enemies. God never prepared a table in our safe place. God never prepared a table where we're not under the spotlight. He prepares a table in front of my enemies. Now for a shepherd, King David was a shepherd. How many of you know that David was a shepherd? We yet that koning David a skaapwachter was. Weet julle, weet julle, as julle het nie geweet het nie, koning David was a skaapwachter. Kijk jy so, as daar skaap oor hier is vanavond, nee, kan jy nou vir julle vertel, die ding van a skaap, is nie makkelijk nie. Now what bring it all to the table means for a shepherd is, in the days of David, they would find a plateau, or a hill, to prepare, waar die skape gaan wei, so as hulle elke keer gaan, as hulle kyk waar is die stroompies, hulle sal rotse vat, as sal hulle kampe bou met rotse, dit is in die veld, dit is in die open veld, dan sal hulle al die gevaarlike omkruid, sal hulle stap, en sal het uitblik, nie omdat hy daar gaan eet nie, want sy skape gaan daar eet, sy skape gaan daar wei, Hy bly by sy skape. So he's preparing the table for these sheep. And all the while he's doing this, terwyl hy hierdie doen, weet hy, goed soos ek en jy hier so sit, in die lijn van die bome, they call it the tree line, staan die bere, die wolf en die luus, en kyk vir hom, and they're watching his flock, while he's preparing a table for his sheep, the enemy, He's busy watching him, just waiting for him to slip up. So, uh, Peter 1, 1 Peter 5 verse 8, as you were. The word tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yet you let it. Weet jylle dat die woord jou waarschie en sê dat die duivel soos een brillende rieuw rondloop om te kyk wie hy kan vermorsel, nee? Wat is die woord? Verskeer. Weet jylle dit? As jylle nie geweet het nie, vertel ek jylle vanaan, die woord sê dat, as die woord het sê, dan geloof dit. Maak jy saak waar jy is en wat jy doen. Die duivel loop soos loop soos een brillende rieuw Nou kom ek sê vir jou, wie hou van skaapjoppies? Kom ek sê vir jou, skaapvleis is een liew, is een lekker vleis. Nee? Kijk jy so, is niks so lekker as een skaapjoppie nie, maar liew, hou baie van een skaap, want een skaap, is nie baie weise dier nie. Kijk jy so, as hy na een willebees toe gaan, wat het een willebees wat een skaap nie het nie? Hoorings. En hy het ook die wil om Kijk jy so, as jy na my kom, gaan ek jou gaffel. Wat gaan een skaap maak? Mee, mee, mee. 
hy gaan haar kloof, maar Leo kan ook ons haar kloof. So is het per toeval dat die woord ons vergelijk met skape en God as ons herder? Nee, want een herder vir een skaap is alles vir hy skaap. Hy maak seker as die giftige bosies nie, want hy gaan het eet. Skaap is nie baie klewe nie. As die giftige bosie groen is, dan denk hy, dis kos, hy gaan het eet en hy gaan doodgaan. Of hy gaan siek word. En God doen nie selwe vir ons. Ons het al die temptations, nee? Staan hy giftige bosie daar so. Doos, dit was een van die clubs wat hy baie ge, gaan keir het. Dis, dis hy giftige bosie. En my herder, nou, as ek so toe gaan en sê my herder, my, uh-uh, kom. Nee, want jy is nie slim genoeg om daar weg te bly nie. So, going back to 1 Peter, where the lion is like a, uh, the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking who can devour. Have you noticed it in your daily lives? Het jy dit al achterkom in jylle dagelijkse lewe? Jy sit by die werk of by die braai, Jy is innocent, jy is op een spiritual high. Jy is die man, vir oog een breakthrough gekry, het woord gekry, hier het met my gepraat. En hier kom koos. Hey, Pax, werk jy nog daar lekker? Sam, is hy nog jou, jou ba, die ou is a jerk, he. Huh? Die ou, yes, en jy, hoe lekker met jou vrou? Sy wil nog steeds baas wees oor jou, nee. Ja, nee, jy is die lewe pek. As jy daar wegstap, wat het gebeur? Kom by die volgende ou. Ja, hoe gaan het? Yes, my vrou wil my baas, hierdie Sam ou. Hierdie Sam ou. Nee, self-appointed manager. Dit is wel voor Sam staan. Nie Samantha nie. I'm just making sure. So wat het daar gebeur? Die vijand het na jou tafel te gekom en het kom stil by jou. Dit is so makkelijk soos dis, dat jy laat het toe wie sit saam met jou by die tafel. So as the shepherd prepares the fields for his sheep, so too does God, our Father, prepare the table for us. So who can tell me why we have a table prepared? Wie kan my sê, hoekom berei God die tafel voor vir ons? Wie kan my sê? Ons het nou net gelees in Psalms 23. We prepare the table so you can have your head anointed okay, with oil so that you can have your cup running over in the form of blessings and so that the goodness and the mercy of the Lord shall follow you forever in your days. But, the next question, what do we need? What is the criteria? What is the criteria om op hierdie tafel te sit? Firstly, we need to accept God's invitation to sit at the table. And secondly, we need to stay close to our heavenly father, our heavenly shepherd. And this is the only way to overcome the attacks of the roaring lion. Staying close is the only way to remain at the table and to be nurtured by God himself. So just a matter of interest. Ek weet nie hoeveel van julle weet. Olive oil. Nee? David, who knew a lot about herding sheep, as a caring shepherd would have applied olive oil or grain oil ne, to his sheep's noses and ears. Because sheep had often been troubled by insects that were buzzing around their noses and their ears and in their head, trying to lay eggs in that soft, moist membrane. So what would happen is, if they're not anointed with oil, if they're not soaked with oil in their ears and their noses, die gogge sal kom, hier binnen, of hier binnen, en they lay eggs. That lava crawls up the nose, or through the ear channel, into the brain, 
dan raak hulle mals, wat daar ding groei, daar lava, groei, en mature word, nee, dan sal die skaap sy kop, tegen die grond, of tegen die rots of iets, bash, totdat sy kop oorbars. So do you think it's, just hang, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, I'll be here now. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. Lord, it's you. Please, come in. Brendan, see, I have prepared a table for you. Come, join me. Lord, may I ask? Indeed, my son. Lord, I have my family outside. Um, can I please bring them in too? Anybody who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. Do they accept my invitation? When I knock, will they open? I'm going to chat to you a bit about the enemy coming to sit at the table of the Lord with you. How many of you believe that this happens? It does. How many of you believe that the enemy is given the right to sit at your table by you? Hey? Come guys, let me tell you. <laughs> it's as simple as um, you're sitting at your table and How's it? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Can you just stand up a second, please? Thanks. 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 <clears throat> oh, so you've got some nice, nice food here. Oh. Mm, it's like a broik is here, huh? Otherwise, you've been well. But I see your health is not going so well. What's happening there? What's the doctor saying? The doctor? Okay. Thank you very much. Maar is dit nie so makkelijk nie, jylle? Is dit nie so makkelijk nie? Ek het nie na aangekom met hoorings op my kop en een ster nie. Met sikke vangs en het wat hulle in die kinderboeken wees. Ek dag kom, ek lyk soos jylle allemaal. Ek dag kom, I, I didn't invite myself. All I did was, I didn't ask if I must be there. I just assumed I can be there. And you know what Um Swais did? He assumed it was a right for me to pick up his piece of bread and eat it off his table that God had set for him. So I came to steal. And then I came to plant thoughts into his head. So our enemy is the devil. It's not intended for us to is not intended for us for him to join our table, sorry. Yet he seizes every opportunity to lie his way into our minds and claim control over our lives. He can cause our minds to spin out of control with thoughts that are unproductive, destructive, and harmful. It is our responsibility to manage those voices as we sit at the table. Our good shepherd invites us to linger at the table and find nourishment, rest, and deep intimacy with the king of the universe. The devil's goal is always the same. He wants to get into your head so he can plant harmful thoughts within you. He wants to kill you and destroy you. He wants to destroy your relationship with God the Father. And he wants to cause division between you and the people you care of. And even uses the people who are closest to you to achieve his goals. He is relentless and will not stop. He is confident and sly. He is the father of all lies, says the word. So, don't believe him. He has no seat at this table, nor any other. It is time to claim the victory over the battles that you fight in your mind. So we've asked already, what is the criteria to sit at this table? Well, simply, 
we can come just as we are. I'm all dressed up and some people notice. Yo, Brennan, you took a long look. Hey? But you come just as you are. There's no special criteria to say that if you're going to come and sit at the Lord's table, you first need to do A, B, C, and D. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you, He didn't say I'm dying on the cross of Calvary for you. If you first do this, first do this, first do this. No, you just got to take it. It's there. The invitation is there. The table is there. God is there waiting for you. The criteria is to come as you are. There's only one Pax, only one Morris, only one Lucille. There's two of me, but he's my twin brother. Not even we the same. We were identical twins as babies. We nothing the same. Only thing that's the same is if we talk on the phone, we sound the same. But that's my physical body. But even I am an individual to him. And I come as I am. No masks, no pretense. However, you have to have faith that God can and will carry your burdens, isn't it? Read this in Psalms 55 verse 22. Cast your burdens to the Lord and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. So, I'm not talking about removing to Joburg. I'm not talking about moving my physical. I'm talking about moving my heavenly position. My spiritual position will not be moved. God won't allow it. If I have faith and trust. If I put my burdens by the Lord's feet. And know that He will deal with it. A lot of times we go, Lord, you know, I'm struggling with this financial situation and uh, Lord, I'm done. I'm giving it to you. Please sort it out. You walk away. But Lord, whilst you're sorting out, don't you want to just do it like this? Okay. Sorry, Lord, I'm sorting out. You're sorting out. But Lord, don't you want to hurry up, please? How many of us do that? Hey? Give it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm done with it. But you're not done with it. You're not. You keep coming back. And you keep saying, but Lord, this is how you sort it out. Lord, I want you to do it. This is what I want. This is the outcome I want. I want to see this sign. Otherwise, it's not you, Lord. Guys, the word says, put it at the Lord's feet. Put your burdens at His feet. And He will fight the fight for you. So simply, this means that we can hand it all over to Him. Everything. Everything that's weighing you down like rocks on your back. Lies you've been told, things that you've believed that have made you feel like you feel right now. For example, thinking that you're not good enough. Another example is that you don't belong and you're not worthy of the kingdom of God and the mercy because you struggle with bad mouthing, swearing, lust, or other things. How many of us are carrying our childhood sorrows, childhood memories that hurt you so badly? Hey, when I was a child, I was a little fatty. Now I'm just an old big fatty. But when I was a child, I was the fatty one in the house. And I was bullied. Until the one day that I did the wrong thing, I became the bully. I didn't win that fight. I just moved the hurt on. And as I got older, I was hurting people. Why? Because I was hurting. And it was good fun. It was lacquer. To watch somebody else hurt more than I did. And it was even better to know that I did it. Yeah, true story. How many of us here are sitting with childhood stuff that was happening in your child? And you're kind of dog, but you're not steeds here now. But you're not steeds up here. And then I became a child of God. And then I realized hang on, I don't need to hurt people. To feel better. I'm already better, man. I can't let somebody's opinion of me determine who I am. God already knows who I am. God already gave me an identity. But you know what? Some of us go through this world today struggling with things, rocks on your back, struggling with what somebody might have told you at work, 
what your husband told you, what your co- children told you, what your best friend said to you. <laughs> That's funny. But in the meantime, inside, yeah, it cuts like a, a razor blade. Well, I'm telling you tonight, we've just read it. Psalms 55 says that you no longer have to carry this. You don't have to carry this. Cast those things to the feet of the Lord. Because when you come to this table, I don't see one of you coming here with a bag of rocks on your back. This table's full. Is there space for rocks here? There's no space for rocks. When you're going to have a sit down at the table of the Lord, are you going to talk about God and how great He is, or are you going to talk about your problems? Yeah, we're going to, so there's no place for the rocks. We need to lay them down. Psalms 23, verse 2 to 4 says that the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Just a quick question. Who knows the difference between a rod and a staff? Staff has got a hook and a rod is straight. So the hook, staff, when a sheep falls into the brook, a brook is at a field, then the shepherd doesn't jump in after him. He takes that hawk and he chews, and they hawk him, and they sleep him eight. Because a sheep, he sees rushing waters. He doesn't know he's got a duvet on his head. I don't rock not a rock swar. So you go and you stick his head into that rushing water. When he falls in, the shepherd grabs him with his rod, uh, with his staff, and he helps him out. He saves him. But while they're sitting in, the wolves and the bears come. What does he use then? His rod. There was no 9 millimeter then. And he knew how to use it. He knew how to use it. Thy mana, it wolver, beera, it works. Robbers, it'll do it with a knuffle. So I've got the comfort knowing that it doesn't matter how far I think I've strayed. God has got the staff to hook me and bring me back and he's got the rod to protect me. And then there's a white paper on your table. It's all pen It's a pen on the table. Ik wil hier met deel. Nee, is het is het wat papierke op jullie taal. Maar hier die pen, papierki. Ik wil hier jullie met die dingen wat jullie pla. Ik ga naar schrijf bullying, waar alle mensen onthouden. Of die feit dat ik sukkel met rook of alcohol. Of wat weet je wat het kan enig iets wees? Schrijf het op hier die papierki. En dan nooit jylle uit. Daar is een vier net die buit kan. Jylle allemaal sien daar waar die rook was, is nou vier. Gaan brand en maak jou, maak jou saak klaar met dit. As die ding gebrand is, is voorbij. Jy los het by Heerese voete en het is voorbij. Vat jylle tyd, dink daar oor, het is een baie privaat ding hierdie. En gaan brand het. Spandeer tyd in die teenwoordigheid van God. Einde van die dag, weerhou dit jou van die koninkrijk van God, en ons het nou klag gemaakt met dit. Dat is mense wat sikkel met rechte goed jylle. Ons is familie. Dat is een rede hoekom ek gesê het, toneelspel van, toe God sê, I've prepared a table for you. Come. 
sit. Join me. Ek het vir a spesifieke doel die woord, Lord, I have a family outside. Want ons is nie net mense wat by mekaar kom by die kerk of by die cel nie. Ons is a familie. Of jy bruin is, of jy swaard is, of jy pink is, of jy geel is, maak jy saak en jy bloed is rooi. As jy my beleid het, en my beleid is die bybel, dan is ons familie. En weet jy wat? My familie moet nie tekort skiet nie. My familie moet nie honger leid nie. My familie moet nie dier dinge gaan, wat te moeilik is, wat hulle dink hulle is alleen. Ons was al daar, baie van ons was al daar, waar jy in een gat sit, jy kyk op, en jy weet nie hoe gaan jy uit die gat uitkom nie. Ek was self daar, en ek weet, daar is baie mense wat hier was, wat ek nou van praat, nee. As ek net iemand gehad het, wat boe die put kom staan, en sy hand so uitgerik, en sê, God is hier weg, hier is jou hand, kom ek sê vir jou, die put wat so diep is, word so diep. Not one of us must carry our burdens alone. Is dit nie? So ons het nou klaargemaak met die goed wat ons pla. Die duivel het klaar kom stil by ons. Die duivel het klaar by jou tafel jou broekies kom vat en jou lekke vruchte wat die Heere vir jou uitgeleid het. En die eeuwige lewe kom vat. Because the truth is if we are allow it ons gaan kortkom, ons gaan spuit wees, ons gaan nie daar kom, waar Godse plan vir ons besemming is nie. Amen. Amen.